Radio Warwickshire. Welcome once again, everyone. You've tuned in to the Dougie Stone Radio Show here on Radio Warwickshire. I hope you like the first show and uh, the coming shows that I've got planned for you. I've, uh, I've been seeking out some amazing people, and I'll use that word a lot, amazing, but they are amazing people. And today we're going to look at adversity. Because I firmly believe that um, adversity can be a positive, but you don't feel like it is at the time. Why am I looking at adversity? Well, it's... Uh, I think it's quite simple really, uh, people start a business for various reasons, it might be because uh, well, they, they start a business straight away when they leave school, but not a lot of people do that. Uh, they could come to a point in their life where they decided they want to do something different, so they go and start their own business and uh, investigate what they'd like to do. And you also get people that start a business when maybe they've lost a permanent job and they think well, let's give it a go let's let's start something and that's what this show is all about is to help you show what other people have done and for me adversity it can either be uh, it can either break you or you can actually absorb that experience and turn it into a positive and that's what I'm interested in and that's what I want to bring you today like I said before I'm dyslexic and I think that's uh, fundamentally one of the advantages uh, of how I, how I am because how my brain works more importantly, I think the adversity that uh, you experience through that is um, puts you in a different, a different mindset and gets you, and gets you thinking differently, and you, you want to do something different, and, and that's why I did as well. So, I hope you enjoy the show. Like I said before, I'd love to hear some of your feedbacks. Um, so get on Twitter now at, at Dougie Stone. Let's start communicating. If you want to send me questions, please use the hashtag Dougie Stone's Dilemmas and I'll pick them up and I'll uh, try and answer them for you. Or if I can, I'll find someone who can. So without further ado, um, let's bring you the show. And our first guest today is Sue Roberts from uh, Advanced Healing Therapist. She is amazing. Radio Warwickshire. Oh, right. Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. And today, I'm looking at adversity. And um, this part of the show, I've, I, I know someone, and she's amazing. And I just, when I first heard her story, I was absolutely blown away. And uh, I've come to have a chat with her today, and I wanted her on the show. So uh, her name's Sue Roberts uh, from Advanced Healing Therapist, and she's amazing. So I'd, I'd like Sue to tell us a bit about her story, really. And... Um, we, on the the from the angle of adversity because I know what she's been through and obviously she's going to share it with you now and then how she's turned that round into what she does today and how she uh, manages her life so thanks for coming on the show Sue. Thank you very much it's lovely to be here and it's great to share my story Um I guess it all began when most people start their career Um you leave school you go to college and I studied hotel and catering management and I worked for a very large restaurant chain um, very demanding hours, hard worker, very successful, loved what I did with mm. a passion. But at the age of 32, I had a major road traffic accident. Mm. I was a passenger in a black cab that was in an accident. As it got shunted from the back, I hit the glass partition as I was thrown off the seat and I damaged my neck. At this point, I just thought it was very typical whiplash, went to hospital, got sent home with a neck collar, but during the event of the next few weeks, I was losing the feeling in my right arm. I lost the feeling in my fingers. I had massive bruising all come out on my chest. And um, I got referred then for physio and to see a specialist. Um, it was quite devastating, really, because it was probably a good four months before I actually got to have some nerve conduction tests and an MRI scan. And um, I went back to see the specialist and he confirmed that these scans were actually of a paraplegic and I shouldn't be right. able to walk. Which, at, at the time you're in shock because you can't believe what you're hearing, but to, to learn that your body is actually quite damaged, what, you know, was a life-changing yeah. moment in time. So um, 
I did the usual reaction. I was traumatised, I was tearful, I was upset, I was not coping well mm. with learning all that information. But soon, you, I was very lucky to have some private health insurance at the time through my employer, and they were very supportive. So I had the best treatment I could get here yeah. in the UK. Um, so I have a friend who's a nurse, and um, she was very supportive. And I guess the best advice she gave me was... Sue, rather than fight this, why don't you learn to accept it and give it a name and let it belong with you Hmm. and become your friend? Because if you work with what's wrong with you rather than just try and fight it, you have an acceptance and then you can move forward. Right. So through this whole series of things that happened, I really changed the way I thought about um, my spinal cyst. The condition is called syringomyelia, which not many people have heard of. Google it. And uh, I think the most people will have heard of uh, Christopher Reeves. He fell off his horse and yeah. had an instant injury, and he had a syringomyelia at C1, and he was instantly paralysed. Yeah, sure. Because it's a, a spinal cyst in the middle of your spinal cord. Mm. Um, my syringomyelia or my cyst was at C5, which meant my paralysis was slower to develop. Right. Um, I, I saw some specialists. My long-term, um, my long-term prognosis was that I was going to be in a wheelchair within ten years. I mean that that's that's if someone tells if someone told me that today, I I, I don't know what I'd do. Yeah, well, that's, that's, yeah, so that's, yeah, this is a horrible... Yeah, it's, it's not a great place to be. And you will just change pretty quick because you're given a team of people to support you, including occupational therapists that come to your house and they design things in your house so you can get around better. Um, some of the um, conditions I had were quite embarrassing. I was slightly incontinent. I didn't mm. walk well. My... I kept burning myself because I didn't have feeling in my hands. And so they come and give you a lot of support. And they told me to redesign my house ready for wheelchair access. So all the floors are level, yeah. big wide doors, yeah, yeah. kitchen redesigned, where there's no turning taps. It was all lever and all drawers, not cupboard, so I could get them into them easy. And that's, yes, because it's totally life-changing, isn't it? It's not just one another. Yeah. Okay. And I guess the crunch then is when you're given the paperwork to tell you you're disabled. Hmm. So you've gone from being a very able-bodied person to being labelled disabled, and your employer pensions you off. Yeah. Because you're disabled, no longer able to do the job. you can't do the job you're employed to do. Yeah. So it does really change your life. Um, I'm quite a rebellious person, Hmm. to be fair, and I didn't want to be in a wheelchair, and I didn't want to be disabled... And I didn't really want to be in that much pain. Um, And I didn't want to be unemployed. Mm. Because I was, had gone from very, being very motivated to having a large team of people to manage to all of a sudden being home alone with an injury. So I decided um, that I would do something more productive. So I actually went back to college and, um, studied psychology and counselling because I thought that was a good idea one for my personal development but two to be able to do that job in a wheelchair and it was quite funny really because when you are training to do counselling you learn what your own fears are Mm. well my fear was obviously loss, loss of my health yeah so I had to turn that around And two, I had a fear of tears. Now, that's really hard to get away from. So um, during the counselling training, I worked for the Child Bereavement Service because if you work with bereaved children, guess what? They cry. Yeah. And you learn very quickly to get over your fear of tears because the, the level of loss that those children have, they deserve to cry. That's terrible, yeah. So... I actually learned to get over my fear of tears very quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, I worked also for Mind, 
through GP surgeries in Hinkley. And I used to take referrals for people that had gone into the doctors, been given a course of antidepressants for six weeks. And in the six weeks of counselling, I'd have them off the antidepressants, sorting out the issue. So if I was going to walk the talk, I really had to do that with myself as well. So um, I I was very lucky in the people that I've met in my lifetime. And I've got this very precious friend called Yvette, who lives in America. And um, she was working in Minneapolis in in counselling psychotherapy. And they had a disaster in Minneapolis in, I think it was 2005. The bridge, the main bridge, the traffic bridge in Minneapolis had collapsed. And there was a school bus full of school children. And they were on the edge of the bridge tipping. So she called me and she said, uh, would you like to come over? We've got all these traumatised school children. We don't want them to suffer with post-traumatic stress disorder. What we'd love to do is get them back into a classroom setting and reenact the accident and see if we can help them. So um, the great thing for me was I flew to the States to obviously go and help my friend. And um, I guess this was a life-changing moment for me. When I got off the plane after 14 hours, I really couldn't walk very well. And um, Yvette is a person that I really love and trust. And she said to me, Sue, honestly... I think you need to start listening. I know you're really strong and I know you're very determined, but if they're saying to you that, you know, you're deteriorating, you need to listen. But I actually also think you need to find an answer because I don't think your lifestyle would work well in a wheelchair, but what you need to do is change it. So um, it was quite interesting and I really do trust her. And um, after I came back from America, she phoned me. And she said she'd been out networking and she'd met a man who'd got two medical machines and he was out networking and his sales pitch was, who is the worst person you know? So she told him about me. She said, my friend Sue Roberts in England. As, 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 in, as in medically, not, yeah. as, not as in the worst person you know, or Sue's. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he said, well, send her over. I'm going to fix her. Mm. And um, she phoned me and I said, well, you know what happened last time I flew over? I could hardly warn. She said, well, if I do all of the study and all of the research and I think this is going to work, would you come? I said, absolutely. So it took about eight months for me to find the time and the money. And I flew over to America in preparation to have 30 private treatments in a clinic with an acoscope and a MyPulse machine, which was very expensive at the time. But if it was going to work, this was going to change my life. Yeah, it, you can't put a price on it, could you? Really? No, absolutely not. So, And I really trusted her. She'd done the work. I believed her. So I flew over to the States. I, in fact, had 21 treatments in the month I was there. And um, the first week was the hardest because as my body began to change... I was in a lot of pain mm. and the, uh, and it became difficult. And at one point I thought, I'm going to quit. I can't do this. Yeah. But um, the the therapist guy that I was working with said to me, oh, well, we can do some ear reflex points to take the pain away. I was thinking, why didn't he tell me this at the beginning? <laughs> so I had some treatment. I had my th- uh, 21 treatments and I came home pain free. Wow. And... I could move quite differently. A lot of my symptoms had gone away. I still have a spinal cyst. You can't remove the cyst. So I still have the syringomyelia. But what I was able to do was treat a lot of the symptoms and be able to be pain-free. And I could feel my feet for the first time in many years. So to celebrate that, I came home and learned to dance. So that's one of my favourite things to do Great. because I could feel my feet. So I'm going to be in a wheelchair, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to go and learn to dance. Instead. Yeah, so um, now I do some ballroom dancing and some rock and roll, which I'm very grateful for. And clearly I'm not in a wheelchair. Yeah. Um, my GP thought I was nuts. I remember going to see my GP to ask his opinion about having this treatment. And it is quite usual for people to go and ask their GP's opinion. And the GP will say, I've never heard of it. 
I know nothing about it. I can't give you an opinion. So I did explain to my GP that if I was to have this treatment and it worked, um, then that would prove that it was the right thing to do. So obviously I improved. And then I came home to England and then I wanted to buy a set of this equipment. And I went back to the GP and he actually said, well, if it's going to cost you 30000 to buy, then surely you should do something more productive with it than just <laughs> having it in your home for yourself. Oh, for yourself. I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it was him that sort of set the idea in motion. Then, well, surely you should open up a clinic and help other people as well. Mm. That was an idea that I um, discussed with my daughter because obviously that's a lot of money. Yeah, of course it is. And also, I had to consider, although I was the most motivated person I know to get rid of pain, and now I'm learning from talking to people, the most motivated people I know are people in pain because they just want to get rid of it. Yeah. Um, was to talk to my daughter, and she decided, along with me, that we should invest in this equipment, go back to college and retrain again. So we went and did a year's training in anatomy and physiology. And then we went to America, trained how to use the equipment. So we did that in a winter, um, five foot snow in Minneapolis in the winter. And they don't have a traffic jam anywhere. (laughs) And um, we learned to use the equipment. We came back and we set up a clinic here in Bindley Woods in Coventry. Uh, I've heard... I've, you've, we've spoke about this before, Sue, and I think your story is just... I was blown away the first time I heard it, and it really got to me. And I just think it's amazing that someone's been told, that's it, you're going to be in a wheelchair, that's, you know, Chris, you know the, 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 the actor, he's got... And you, and you think, that's that's my future. And for you, to turn, for you to turn around and say, I'm not accepting that, and for friends that you know to say, we're not accepting that, we're going to find a way... And there's not a cure for everything. Not everyone's going through something that can be can be cured, is there? You know? No, absolutely but not. But to have that, I mean, we, if you hadn't done that, we'd have never met and you wouldn't have helped the, all the people that you help currently. I think it's just amazing. And so there's, there's a couple of things that's happened to you I mean, and that one. So how, what do you think that, that adversity has, has, has done for you? What, what's it, has it, has, did it change you as a person, do you think? Absolutely. I think... Um, Everybody that has some kind of life-changing trauma does have to be bereaved and they have to grieve. Yeah. And I did that. And, you know, it wasn't a great feeling. It was painful. But you have to go in one side and you have to come out the other. And during that process, I then thought about other options. And it is about having a positive mental attitude, Mm -hmm. you know, I had the support of a friend who told me to love it as part of me and find a way to be able to work with my syringomyelia. I had this amazing friend who was very supportive in America called Yvette. And I had the most precious, amazing support of my daughter who Mm. used to dress me in the morning. So really, it's having a support system. And if... You really have to find that. And then deciding and making a decision, what does my future look like and how am I going to get there? And mine was not in a wheelchair Mm. with some of my friends pushing me around. Yeah, it's not good. I mean, and I'm glad you're not in a wheelchair, Sue, obviously, because obviously you you are as well. But I I believe in even if that had been ended up being the path that you ended up down, I think you'd still have been amazed if you found something else to do. But I'm so glad that's not where you've ended up and I'm so glad you've done what you've done and the attitude that you've got and I wanted to talk to you today because I want to share that with the people that are probably sat there now going my world's ending I've just found out this is happening to me or that's happening to me or I'm going through this at the moment that there is it's painful but there is a light and there's something else at the end of yeah it. A- absolutely and you have a lot of time to reflect mm. when you're ill and you're trying to recover And I think probably you pray a lot. I did a deal with God. If you help me, I will make an improvement to the world. (laughs) I, with a passion, will help other people not suffer. And um, 
that's what happened. Um, there are other people I know that suffer with syringomyelia because my specialist told me, and there were people that had um, a much quicker journey from being very able-bodied to being in a wheelchair really quickly. Wow. And so I, I understand that it affects other people differently, but I do definitely think if you put mind over matter, have a positive mental attitude, um, that will help any recovery really yeah. quickly. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I think what you've done with the, you know, buying the machine that you use, and God knows how it works. Uh, have you, well, I know, I know it works because I've got a back from myself and you've actually treated me and that's how I know how, how great it is. I think it's amazing. So thanks for sharing that with us, Sue. But um, obviously it's not just about talking to people, it's about what they do and a lot of people talk to are business people. So tell us a bit about your business, where people can find you, if they want some more information because there could be someone out there in a similar situation too that you could help and that would be great, wouldn't it? Yes, absolutely. So I use... Um, a pain and stress management system. It's called the Electroacuscope and Myopulse. Um, it won the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 1991. And the only other thing I can tell you, it absolutely works. It does. It uses tiny electrical currents to refire the cells and grow new cells to re repair damage in the body. Um, we're based in Binley Woods in Coventry. And um, people can contact us on our telephone number at the clinic on 02476 543 And um, I look forward to helping anybody that needs some help. So if they can't get to this clinic, there's another clinic they can go to. Where's that? Minneapolis St. Paul in America. Oh, yeah, great. Oh, that's lovely. Thanks very much. I mean, that, it's very brave of you to share that story with us. And I really appreciate, it. appreciate that, Sue. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kirk. Radio Warwickshire. Hey, what do you think about that? I told you she was amazing. She's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, Sue, I, I class her as a friend now. I've known her for some time and she's a really good person to know, so uh, check her out. And I don't know how that machine works that she's got, but it does. I know, I've, uh, I've been to Sue and, and I've got a, a back problem and if I have any issues with it, I go and see Sue, she's really good. So if you're sat there and you're thinking the world's ending for you, um, there could be a way out and uh, it could be a positive way out, not a negative way out. That's what I want to get over today. So why don't you get on Twitter, uh, give us some comments at Dougie Stone at, or at Radio Walks. Um, and like I said before, any questions, uh, can you put them down as Dougie Stone's Dilemmas and I'll try and answer for them for you. Next up, we've got Jill Cook, a family friend and another person who's had a lot of hardship in her life. And um, yeah, she's, she's uber, uber positive. And I think that's great if you can if you can twist the adversity you have or the issues that you come across into something positive, and uh, that can be life changing for yourself and for other people. And I know Jill uses that to help other people in in what she does day to day. So, uh, and I think that is uh, commendable. this was uh, as I like it an impromptu an impromptu interview I wasn't expecting to get and um, yeah it um, but it works I love it like that it's uh, it's the way I like to operate unscripted unrehearsed and uninformed and those that know me it's a bit like a pounce interview but on the radio so let's hear what Jill's got to say Thanks for listening. Radio Warwickshire. Yeah, so I'm um, actually this part of the show. I uh, I'm actually at a family party. I'm at twenty first birthday party. I'm always seeking people that have been through adversity and sort of I want to explain or show people that adversity can be a positive. So anyway, I'm here with Jill. So Jill, take it away. Yeah, so during my life I've been through some sadness, um, mostly to do with loss and grief, uh, loss of family members, 
uh, loss of a child and I've found over the time that life's really difficult and the times of my life where it's been really dark and I've not been able to see a way out at times a lot of anxiety, panic attacks but I've also seen that those times have made me who I am now and no matter how dark and unhappy you may be at a time there will come a moment where you realise I had to be there in order to come out the other side and now I use a lot of my personal experiences when I'm working one on one with students and just people that you may meet every day in life and it can be simple as paying it forward with a kind word and a smile but the smallest thing that you can do will have a massive effect on people that you meet every day. Cool. No, that's cool. So what you're saying is the adversity that you've you've experienced has actually created you. I mean I just used the word before that you've uh, like a coon turn into from a caterpillar into a butterfly. So it's actually made you the person you are now, a very strong person, very determined person. Yeah. And I think that's uh, good for people to, who are listening to understand that they might be going through some bad times, but actually yeah. it's going to make them better. Oh my God, yeah. Whatever you, uh, whoever may be listening that is caught up in any kind of sad or desperate situation, this isn't the end. This isn't where it finishes because things will get better. And at some point, whether it's weeks, months, years down the line, you're going to look back on these times now and think, yeah, that's what made me the person that I am today. Brilliant. That's brilliant. Thanks for that, Jill. That's uh, really good. Cheers. Radio Warwickshire. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, people. Uh, that's another show uh, coming to an end. And um, I really enjoy making these shows and I hope you enjoy listening to them as much as I do producing them. And what I'm trying to do is bring you things that interest me and things that help you on your uh, journey as an entrepreneur or setting up your business, whatever the case may be. And I'll be bringing you various aspects of that. And my next show, what I'm going to bring to you is um, found this, this amazing couple in, um, there's that word again, amazing, in Scotland who have decided to set up a business um, making rum, a rum distillery in Scotland, where the whiskey comes from, and uh, the business is called uh, Beechcraft and uh, Beechcraft Spirits. And this couple have gone down the crowdfunding route. So um, instead of going down the normal route of maybe getting a loan or re- remortgaging or savings, they've gone down the crowdfunding route, which I think is quite a very uh, modern way of funding a business or a product or an idea and it, it's it's gaining momentum you'll see crowdfunding coming up all the time so what they uh, what you don't normally see is their experience or what happens with crowdfunding so we're going to find out their story um, what they're currently going through how they've how they've uh, experienced it what, and, and a bit about their business obviously because that's only fair isn't it so we'll find out what the rum's all about and I've got um another person that I'm going to be bringing onto the show over the next couple of weeks and she was the first female CEO in British Rail and um, Jackie Chapel. and that that uh, might not sound too amazing but if you can imagine it was in uh, a deep the deep dark days of uh, when when it was a very male dominant environment it still is but about then it was and and to climb up through the ranks and become uh, quite a senior leader within a big uh, male, a male-dominated national industry was just it, it's brilliant. And her journey turning into a um, a business owner when what she's currently doing now. So that's a couple of things I'm bringing up for you. And uh, on the next show, I've also interviewed um, Michelle Ibs. She's she's a, she's a darling from 4N, and uh, she's going to be talking about niche. So I'll put that in niche with the uh, with the uh, crowdfunding. And um, and each week I'll try and explain what we're what we're bringing to you. And if you've got any questions, like I keep saying, get on Twitter at Dougie Stone uh, at Dougie Stone's Dilemmas, and uh, I'll I'll try and answer some of those questions for you. But thanks for listening. Really appreciate it. And um, hey, I look forward to meeting you. See you soon. Radio Warwickshire.